Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship, and um, I apparently Mike Wallace, the cat, had to be a part of this video. I did not plan on that, but it's raining outside, and he's comfortable, so whatever. Um, so today, we are going to talk about five reasons why Studio One may just be the perfect DAW broadcast program. Yes, so the reason why this video came up, uh, a couple of things happened to coincide. Uh, one, uh, I have a local church that wanted to hear what their mix would sound like if it was coming through a DAW rig instead of through their mixer, um, which is doing a two-track um, um, mix that's coming out of it right now. It's its own mix, but um, it just wasn't sounding as good as they wanted it to. On the other hand, uh, a few weeks back, I talked to uh, my local Personas rep. Hey, Tim, hope you're doing well. And, uh, and he connected me with Richard over at Personas, who is in charge of the um, worship division, or I'm not quite sure what it's called, of Personas, which is really cool that as a corporation, they have a department that's dedicated to church and houses of worship, um, which I've always appreciated that about Personas, but... Got to talk to Richard a little bit about um, the doll rig thing and some of the um, limitations and fun things that have been working out well and what could be better. Uh, and he mentioned trying out Studio One. So um, this is not endorsed by Personas. However, they did send me a license so that I could try it. And I have to say, um, after playing with Studio One a little bit, wow, like I'm... Really, really impressed with it, and there are some really cool things in it that um, are going to be interesting for broadcast rigs. So I'm hoping this uh, this church is going to go ahead with this because um, I'm really excited to see this in, in action now. So I want to show you, um, I've only had this program open for about two or three days now, but there are five things that, five things that really stick out to me um, that I wanted to talk about. So uh, number one, uh, folders for days. Um, so let me get my mouse over here. The cat's bumping his head in the microphone. Um, okay, so one thing that I like to do is I like to like Russian doll style um, nest my my files as necessary. Um, so for example, in my drums over here, you can see I've got a uh, drum. This is a drum folder that has a bus attached to it. So it acts like a bus, but it's also a folder. If I click on the little folder in here, I have all my drum channels, my effects. But if you look at this, inside of it is another folder, which Logic wouldn't let me do this. Um, so I have my overheads channel in here. If I open that up, you can see I've got my left and right overhead. They're panned hard left, hard right. They're set to Unity. And then I'm using the overheads folder um, to process it. So I've got a Studio Rack um, plugin on here. Throw that over there so you can see it. And um, that is what is processing this like it's one channel, um, but it's actually two that are going to a bus. And it's just very clean looking because I will hardly ever need to actually open up those two individual channels. Um, so I can just keep it looking like this and pretend like that's one channel, and it's just a lot cleaner looking. Whereas when I did that in Logic, I had to have um, three channels open because I'd have the uh, overheads, and then I'd also have um, so the overhead bus and the individual channels. So being able to nest folders inside of folders um, just makes things really, really clean, um, and I like that a lot. So here's another example. If I... Uh, if I scroll over to my keys, I can open up my keys folder. And inside that, I've got keys one and keys two. These are both stereo keyboards. But within each one, I've got the individual channels. So if something happened and one was gained up hotter than the other, um, I'd have the ability to level them out as I need. Um, and if I, if I wanted to process one uh, over the other, I could do that. Um, like if you know, on the overheads, maybe I want to work on the hi-hat more in the left-hand mic. Um, well, I, I can do that, but I like to try and process things as a group um, so it just sounds more cohesive. Now, with all this done, um, this comes up to our 
uh, our second option on here is key commands. Um, there are a ton of key commands, and you can import key commands. So I imported. Uh, I'm a logic guy, so I put the logic key commands in here. And then on top of that, I made my own key commands um, for things like this. So, for example, I just opened up a whole bunch of folders. And now what I was looking at, it was really clean before. is a little bit messy because there's a bunch of stuff open. Um, so for me, if I hit Shift-Z, I've just collapsed all those folders back to be closed. And I'm now seeing all my stuff right here as I see fit. Uh, if I hit the... Uh, let's go to my drums. If I hit the V button, it's going to open up the plugin window for that setting. Um, let's go back to looking at my drums. So if I have, say, my kick, you can see as I move the channels over, it's keeping that plugin window open and showing me what's going on for that. I can hide it again with the letter V, which is a key command I took from Logic. Uh, if I select something else, so I'm, I'm on kick right now, if I go over to Tom2 and unhide that button with V again, it's now showing me the Tom2 settings. Small thing, but that didn't always work correctly in Logic. So I'm loving that. Again, Shift-Z will collapse everything down. Um, key commands plus something called scenes. Scenes is my third uh, big thing that I'm liking about uh uh, Studio One right now. Um, scenes are kind of like scenes in a digital mixer, um, except that the way I'm using them is just to show me certain faders at a time. So this is especially important when you're working with a, a DAW rig for broadcast, because you could have like this, this church has a 32 channel mixer, but by the time I add in my effects and my different buses that I'm processing through, it's ending up being about 54 lanes of information. So for me to scroll from channel one to 54 is not a very quick thing to do. So what I can do instead is create these scenes over here. So for one, I've got scene all, which is what we're looking at right now, which is all my buses, it's my starting point. But if I wanted to go to save the drums, I can double click this scene button and now I've preset this to be all my drum channels and drum effects, and that's all I'm seeing. And what's great about this is that if you have, you know, your motorized fader bank, I haven't tested this yet because I have got this um, on loan in the church right now, but I'm, I'm thinking that's going to actually show up on my motorized fader, so I can get around really quickly with that. Um, so scenes plus key commands can make things really quickly, uh, quick because I can do command one, and I have set that to be my scene one, which is my all group. And I can very easily hit command two. And hey, look, now I'm in my Vox scene. So I've got my vocals, my vocal effects. I've got to send and return channels that I made for these, uh, these effects. So it's very, very easy to move around and get things. And you can also program in um, uh, MIDI uh, uh, channels to do these things too, instead of using the keyboard. Um, so scenes, are awesome, key commands combined with them, double awesome, I'm loving it. All right, next, number four for things that uh, really impressed me about Studio One is the listen bus. Now, so far, everything I've talked about uh, has been something that I believe you can get in the Studio One artist version, um, which is the one that's only $100. The listen bus is one of the things on here that does require, at least at this point, because it's a new feature, it does require you to um, have the pro version, uh, which is $400. Now let's, let's talk about this real quick. Part of the reason why I wanted to check out Studio One, I love Logic, but Logic is, is exclusive to a Mac. Logic is only $200, which is a fantastic deal, but you have to buy a two or $3,000 computer to be able to get that $200 software. So that's the reason why they're able to keep it so cheap. Um, Studio One is $400 for the pro version, um, but you could potentially save you know, a ton of money if you can get a custom-built PC that it can run on um, that's powerful enough for, for your needs. So that could work out in the end. And again, everything I've talked about until this point, I believe will work on the artist version. Um, but this is actually really cool because what the Listen Bus does is um, it fixes something that 
a digital mixer can do, but a DAW generally cannot, is to have a solo bus. So practical example, let's, let's go to our Vox scene here. Let's say that during either a rehearsal or service, uh, someone is singing really out of tune and you need to find out who they are so you can turn them down in the mix. Um, and so if you were to say solo this Worship Leader 1 mic here, notice that what happens is it soloed the bus that it's going to and it muted everything else. Um, so that's a, a solo in place, meaning that we are going to hear it go through all the processing. So the Vox bus, the uh, mastering bus, the stream bus, we're going to hear that go all the way down the line, which is great because you're going to hear what that sounds like in isolation. The problem is, if you did that during an actual service, your online audience would also only hear the worship leader, which would be hugely distracting. So if you watched my um, DAW rig video about Logic, my way around this was to build a... Um, another bus that you could turn on and it would send it to a pair of headphones, um, which was cool, but it wasn't um, intuitive for people because they wanted to click on the big S button instead. Uh, and it, there wasn't a fast and easy way to send that to your monitors if you wanted to. You had to have a pair of headphones. Um, so what you can do instead in Studio One now is if you right-click on this, and go to solo through listen bus. Again, I'm a solo that mic one. And now notice that's the only thing that has a solo button on it. And what would happen is if we were listening to a stream right now, you would see over on the stream bus over here, this is what the online audience is hearing, you would see the audio for the full band, including the worship leader, going through that. The audience would have no idea that you're listening right now through just the worship leader through this listen bus. Um, so you can listen to things, you can uh, make them pre-fade just like you would do in a um, actual console. Um, the other cool thing you could do is let's say uh, that your studio monitors that you're listening through are maybe a little bit bass heavy. And so all your mixes online sound weak because you are pulling bass out of channels because it sounds bassy in your room. Um, you can actually throw processing, uh, my, my head's in the way of where it is, but there's an insert spot uh, at the top of each of these channels where I can process the listen bus independently of what the online audience is hearing. So in that instance, I could EQ my studio monitors to sound better for my room and fix up issues that are happening and that will affect the way I'm hearing my mix and, and what I'm doing for the online audience, but it will not affect the online audience mix. So now that my speakers are more flatly tuned, I will be able to put some of that low end back into those individual channels, and ultimately it will sound better for the online audience. So really, really cool that they built that in there, and it works perfectly. Um, the only thing you have to do is just remember which mode you're in, because I would say that during rehearsal, you're going to want to turn off solo through listen bus <coughs> just so that you can um, hear what the master bus is doing to your channels as well. Um, but during a, a service, soloing through listen bus, awesome. Really, really smart. Finally, number five, the reason why I'm impressed with Studio One is stability. Again, love Logic, not knocking Logic, um, but any good uh, studio engineer will tell you that when you're in the middle of a project, you never update your OS, your software, or your plugins. Because if you do, and one of those things messes up the others, um, you're screwed. So we have a big project we're working on right now. It's going to be coming out in a few months here. Um, and... Uh, until that project is done, I cannot update anything on my computer. I can add stuff, but I can't update anything. And, uh, and so I don't know if it's just my version of Logic plus my version of Waves, but um, I've been getting more and more crashes recently in my Logic sessions um, when I close these, um, these Studio Rack windows. Sometimes it will cause Logic to crash. Now, this has never been a, a problem for me during a service 
because I don't mess with this stuff during service. I uh, I tend to um, just do faders and mutes during a service. Um, but it's still getting frustrating. Well, I've had Studio One open since I got it um, for hours at a time. The first night I was working on it for about six hours and, uh, and no crashes whatsoever, nothing weird happening. So just really, really impressed with how uh, stable it is. I'm, I'm using some pretty intense plugins at the moment and, uh, and it's, it's carrying on like a dream. So uh, really impressed with this program. There's other stuff that I'm not going to get into yet because I haven't had a chance to play with it, but there's some cool things in there that look like they could, um, how do I say this, make things, they could do things that there's a certain um, uh, online mix that people are buying that's very expensive uh, that this could potentially replace, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to keep that under my hat for right now. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a future video. Um, but yeah, Studio One, check it out. It looks like it's pretty cool. Uh, I will hopefully be doing some more videos on this soon. So until next time, have a great week.